rest in peace digital comics. Uh, <laughs> That's, that's my takeaway from this. Amazon is finally shutting down Comixology. This is Neon. This is Clownfish TV. I am not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video. Uh, but yeah, the day is upon us that uh, Amazon is going to officially shut down Comixology. And, you know, here's the thing. If digital comic sales were really that spectacular, we've been hearing for years that digital comic sales are really, really good, guys. Trust me, bro. Digital comic sales are where it's at. If they were really that fantastic, we would have had an alternative, a viable alternative to Comixology built and ready to go. Um, because, you know, the writing has been on the wall for years that, you know, Amazon wasn't really that interested in Comixology. And also Amazon probably wouldn't shut it down or they would have done something else. You know, um, clearly digital comics are not bringing a lot to the bottom line. <laughs> of Amazon and they're just looking at this like a comic book is still a book guys you can just buy it on Kindle so anyway before we get into this video any further we're going to talk a little bit about this uh, go out to shopclownfish.com you can buy a physical copy of Shadowbinders volume 3 hardcover edition uh, this is coming next year we're working on it right now and it's the first new Shadowbinders content in a decade uh, books one and two also uh, still available in very limited quantities. We might go back and do a paperback version of this at some point. Uh, I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. We've been talking about it. But uh, we do not have a digital version of Shadowbinders, despite the fact that Shadowbinders started as a webcomic. And, uh, you know, we don't do digital comics now. People keep asking us for digital tiers. And I'm like, no, what happened before was... You know, we would sell PDFs and they would wind up uh, torrented or, uh, you know, on a scan site or whatever within a couple of days of releasing them. So I'm like, no, we're, we're not doing that. If you want our comics, you're going to have to buy the physical copies for now. Because uh, I don't really trust the, uh, the digital comic ecosystem. I think it's more convenient for some people, but most people that read comics, most people that read comics like a physical book to hold in their hands, you know. Um, there's something very different about holding a comic book versus reading it on a screen or on a tablet or on your phone. In my opinion, that being said, some people do like to read comics digitally. I read some manga digitally. I have got the, uh, the Shonen Jump app and I like that quite a bit, but you know, comiXology, we've been hearing for years that, uh, you know, digital comic sales are booming. And I'm like, well, if that was the case, we would have a lot more competitors, won't we? Everybody would want to jump into that space. And what we've seen is the opposite. We've seen people getting out of it. You know, Marvel and DC, I think, had their own apps and they kind of got out of it. You know, I don't think the money's really there. So this is going from ICV2. And then we're going to go out and look at the uh, the reactions here. Uh, Amazon's shutting down Comixology. Amazon announced Tuesday through emails to affected customers that they will be merging Comixology and Kindle on iOS, Android, and Fire on December 4th, 2023. Any books purchased on Comixology will be automatically visible in the user's Kindle library. Amazon also mentioned enhancements that they have made to the Kindle app to deliver the great digital comics, graphic novels, and manga experience you're accustomed to on the Comixology app. Uh, currently, it's very broken, as I understand it. I, I Once they made the announcement that they were going to kind of merge Kindle and Comixology, I stopped buying digital comics. I, I would buy some comics digitally, because our closest shop is still kind of a hike. It's like 45 minutes from here. Because uh, most of the comic shops around us have closed down. Um, but yeah, you know, it's still about 45 minutes for us to get to uh, the comic shop of our choice. And, uh, you know, a lot of comics, floppies, I'm not going to buy them. I, I don't really like to bag and board comics anymore. I'm, I'm kind of over that. And mostly I buy trades. I buy thicker books I can put on a shelf. And if it's a single issue, a lot of times, if I'm not sure if I'm going to like the series or not, I will buy it digitally and then I'll buy the trade paperback later if I really, really enjoyed it. That's how I usually buy my comics now anyway. So the Kindle library now groups issues, volumes, and omnibuses from the same series. The user can hide and unhide specific comics, graphic novels, and manga. The in-app filter has a comics and manga item. Okay, well, that's nice. Members of Comixology Unlimited, Kindle Unlimited, or Amazon Prime can borrow comics, graphic novels, and manga directly in the app. The Comixology URL will still be active for digital comic purchases. Yeah, so Amazon acquired Comixology in 2014 
and began shutting down the company with a, a round of massive layoffs earlier this year. See bloodbath at Comixology. 2022, Comixology co-founder and CEO David Steinberger left the company. Uh, he has since co-founded the publisher. Oh, okay. So he was behind Distillery with former Comixology executive Chip Mosher. So Chip, uh, Chip is one, I think I told the story before. Now I haven't talked to him in years, but he used to work for Boom. And uh, he was the one that wrote me. I think I said this story. I, I told you guys a story before. Geeky told the story about how uh, Boom was like the only Disney comics publisher I was not allowed to work for. Like I had the, I had the, the, the okay, the green light from Disney to work pretty much wherever I, I wanted to on stuff, but I was not allowed to work for boom. And it's because of chip mosher chip mosher did not like that. I was posting Disney comics, monthly sales numbers on a Disney forum. And he told me as much now, you know, I don't know if he was legitimately concerned, but I took it to be kind of, <laughs> Kind of, kind of like a threat, and then I found out after the fact from my uh, longtime friend Aaron Sparrow that uh, yeah, I was I was blacklisted from Boom. I was not allowed to work for Boom uh, while while Chip was there anyway. So yeah, so that's that's my Chip Mosher story. Then he wound up at uh, Comicsology, and um, you know the rest is uh, history. And so is so is Comicsology. But good luck with Distillery. I guess I don't even I don't even understand what Distillery is. I have no idea what distillery is. So here's the thing. They, they've been telling us for years that digital comic book sales are fantastic. You know, that this is, this is like an untapped market, that this is, you know, you can't believe that, uh, you know, Ms. Marvel isn't selling very well because you don't know what the scholastic numbers are like and you don't know what the digital comic sales are like. Well, nobody really did. There was no way to, to quantify that. You just had to trust me, bro. Digital comic sales are where it's at. And I'm like, that's, that's fine. I, I guess, you know, if the company is actually coming out and saying that, but mostly it was speculation. I think on the part of a lot of, uh, starry eyed freelancers, they wanted to believe that, you know, their comics were selling more than a thousand copies a month or something. So, uh, screen ramp put this out a couple of years ago. They said, how did digital comic book sales compare to physical copies? Um, they said, there's no way to know. In 2018, Comicron estimated, estimated, everything's estimated now, estimated digital comic book sales in North America garnered 100 million with overall sales rising approximately 4% in 2019, estimated. By comparison, comic book stores raked in 510 million in 2018 with booksellers funneling in a, an additional 465 million. So even if it was $100 million in 2018, which I, I have a hard time believing that, I really do. But even if it was, that's still a fraction of the rest of the industry. And to a company like Amazon, it ain't much. You know, I mean, Amazon deals in such massive, massive amounts of money that they can like shut down the Washington Post. They don't really care about that. You know, Jeff Bezos is like, whatever, it's a play thing for me. Um, they just shut down some of their gaming stuff. Uh, their one Twitch channel, Crown, they shut that down. Uh, they're laying off a bunch of people. I think Twitch is going to get gone before it's all said and done. I really do. I think that uh, if it doesn't make more money, yeah, I think they were trying to position it as a legitimate like YouTube competitor, but I, I don't think it's ever going to quite get there. I could totally see Amazon selling it or shutting it down because there's probably more of an advantage uh, from a, a tax perspective to just say, yeah, we tried and failed to make money at this business, so we're just going to shut it down and take the, uh, take the write off. I could, I could see them doing it. And that's probably what's going on with comiXology. They're probably like, there's not enough interest in digital comics, really. Even if $100 million, and how much of that is, you know, Webtoon, how much of that is Viz, you know, this isn't all comiXology. So figure maybe, maybe comiXology is like a fraction of that, like $20 million or whatever. They're going to be like, it's, it's not worth it to Amazon. That is, we make that every 15 minutes, you know, on Amazon selling crap. Uh, so again, this is two years ago. While interest in digital comic book stores is certainly growing, there clearly isn't enough sales to sustain the market indefinitely, or at least over a pandemic spanning several months. So they were even saying, Screen Rant was saying during the pandemic, the digital comic sales were not enough to keep comics afloat. It'll be interesting to see how the digital comic book numbers shift in either direction for 2020. 
Well, <laughs> given given that they're uh, shutting Comixology down, I don't think they they shifted in the direction that they wanted them to. Will more readers switch to digital? No, no, they did not. Or or does will does will the precarious situation of the retailers force more readers to embrace print? Uh, I think people gave up on new monthlies. I think they went. Uh, and they started buying back issues because everybody's talking about how comic book sales were booming. They've never been better. Yeah, back issues, good back issues, not the not the crap from the last five years that's uh, you know, just languishing in the quarter bin. They still have quarter bins. I'm thinking for inflation, it's probably like a 50 cent or buck bin now. I don't think they do the quarter bins anymore. There used to be some really good stuff in the quarter bins, too. There used to be some damn good comics in the quarter bin. And uh, God, I, I miss I miss being able to just go through and find all the all the good stuff. I, I find all these independent books. I think the first time I ever read Too Much Coffee Man, and I love Too Much Coffee Man. I do. Uh, I think the first time I ever read Too Much Coffee Man, it came from a quarter bin. And I'm like, what is this? It's a guy with a cup for a head. This is freaking weird. And it looks, it, you know, looked really, um, really indie. And I picked up a copy and I loved it so much. I went out and fought, found like all the too much coffee man <laughs> comics, you know, because I loved it. And there's just some weird stuff. A lot of indie stuff. We used to find all kinds of indie stuff, especially out in California. Flying Colors comics. I used to have all kinds of self-published, uh, RIP, by the way. Um, but they used to have all kinds of self-published comics and stuff back in the 90s. It was great. Anyway, there's my old man stories. So yeah, it digital's not doing too good, guys. Uh, it really isn't. Um, yeah, everybody's kind of talking about it. Uh, yeah, you can no longer read comics on the Comicsology app. You know, uh, Heidi McDonald, the Comicsology app will officially merge into Kindle with all the purchases available there. But Comicsology branding on the web will continue. Yeah, it's kind of confusing. You know, um, Amazon's going to close Comicsology. Uh, yeah, I just look, they're they're it's not important. Digital comics are not important to Amazon. I don't know. I remember people cheering when Amazon bought Comixology. They're like, finally, it's the big time, guys. Amazon's buying Comixology. This is our ticket. Then they, they were doing like Comixology originals, and it's like, no, comics aren't important to Amazon. Manga sales are important, graphic novel sales are probably important, but you know, a book's a book to them. And it's a redundancy. You've already got Kindle. It already works. I, I think the difference between Comixology and Kindle, at least back in the day, was that Kindle did not handle graphics very well. And that that has changed. Uh, I think they probably would have, you know, gotten rid of Comixology a lot sooner had had uh, Kindle been able to to handle all the graphics and stuff. But uh, Danny Barham, Danny Barham, Amazon's gradual dismantling of comicsology and all that made it unique and distinct and comic book reader friendly continues. Glad they're at least giving the Kindle app some discreet comic reading functionality, but comics deserve their own dedicated app in store. They do, but it's not going to come from a place like Amazon. Uh, Eric Hodson, I know this guy, I know this guy. I tried with Comixology, a terrible reading experience, rotate, phone, zoom in, too much work. Webtoon works better for digital. I actually agree with that. Uh, unless you have a big, like I have a, um iPad Pro, and that's why I read the Shonen Jump manga on. It works a lot better, you know. But, but reading on a phone, there's no way you can do it on a phone. Grace Randolph even, devastating. Comixology is getting folded into the Kindle app. So Mr. Anti-Moth here blames capitalism. Uh, it's not untrue. But it didn't make enough money on its own to warrant staying on its own. Oh man, it's gone. Sad to see it go. Uh, if Comixology is being swallowed up by Kindle and Amazon is not your thing, then I recommend these great places to grab them. drive through Comics, yes. Global Comics, yes. But again, they're not Amazon. It's not like you can just pick everything up. It's just, it's, it's over guys. It's digital comics are over, uh, except for webtoon. <laughs> webtoon is like webtoon's kind of where it's at. Viz, uh, Viz is where it's at shown and jump. But again, I don't think that digital comic sales were ever that fantastic, you know, or, or this wouldn't be happening. I, I'm just saying. Heidi is trying to put a positive spin on it. There's some good news. Comixology as a brand is not ending. The landing page will remain as a portal to buy comics. You know, you can go out to gawker.com. It's still there. I think Gawker just got sold again, by the way. 
but it's still there. It's just a page, but it's still there. And the Comixology Originals program is continuing, is it? As is the Comixology Unlimited subscription program for now. For now, you'll still be able to go to Amazon.com Comixology on the web and find and purchase digital comics. For now, you know, I think that they're just slowly rolling it into Kindle. And a year from now, I think it's going to look a lot different. Um, a lot different. You know, she says in the way of giant corporations, one of the reasons Comixology had to be had to be folded into Amazon in general was that it was built on a different software platform than the rest of Amazon. So that, yes, but they could have just basically created a Kindle's a, a Kindle Comics app, just a dedicated Kindle Comic app, and they had years to do it and they didn't do it. So all this merging is literally the only way to keep improving the Kindle Comics experience. I. No, I don't agree. Do they advertise on her site or something? I don't agree with this at all. I think it's, I think digital comics aren't important to Amazon. I really don't think they are. Uh, because if they were, uh, Chip Mosher and his, his buddy from Comixology, they'd still be there. They'd still be running the program. They'd be out there uh, just trying to hire as many cartoonists as they could and give them fat Amazon checks to make all kinds of comics. And they're not doing it. So I'm, I'm sorry. I think this is, this is not good for digital comics. I think it's another revenue source that's going to potentially dry up for publishers, especially smaller publishers that publish more niche stuff. Um, I know when they made the changes to Comixology, we did a video on it. And a lot of publishers said that their digital sales tanked like right out of the gate because people just, they were not having it. They were not going to buy the comics digitally. They couldn't read them very well on Kindle. And um, they just kind of walked away from it, you know, and it's hard to get readers back. It really is. Once, once a habit's broken, you know, once people realize that they can not go to that, that new Star Wars movie or not watch that new Marvel show or not buy that comic book every, every Wednesday, you know, that they can get by with what they've got. They don't have to have the newest thing or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Once you break that habit and the pandemic broke that habit for a lot of people, all over the place, a lot of different ways, a lot of different media. It's very hard to get people to come back. And uh, I think it just never, I just don't think things ever came back. I don't think they ever did. So I don't even know if they were there to tell you the truth. Uh, that's my opinion on digital comics. So take care to leave it. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. <laughs>